Part 10 Iron and Steel The end of the Napoleonic Wars was followed by a period of transition. During the rest of the 19th century, new technologies radically changed both ships and naval warfare. The changes included from sail to steam and from short-range smoothbore to long-range rifled cannon. Great Britain's Royal Navy needed to maintain its dominant position to protect the British Empire's global trade network. It had to keep up with many changes, for instance from wooden ships to iron and then steel. The introduction of steam engines led to steam frigates, vessels equipped with both steam engines and sails. One of the first major changes was a new type of gun which could fire explosive shells. About the same time, the Royal Navy began to use steam vessels, at first as tugs like HMS Comet in 1822. The advances were not demonstrated until 1853 at the Battle of Sinop, when a Russian sailing fleet firing Peksan guns destroyed a Turkish fleet, including armed steamers. The relatively few naval battles of the 19th century were significant as tests for new tech such as armour, but the Royal Navy had to respond to any apparent threat to its superiority. The Crimean War saw the first use of new technologies such as the electric telegraph and railways. It also demonstrated the vulnerability of wooden ships to shore-based artillery. The result was that both British and French warships had to add armour protection. The French Gloire, launched in 1859, was not only the first ironclad steam frigate, it became a prototype which was widely copied. It was a conventional wooden ship with armour plating, but briefly it made every wooden warship obsolete. The following year the British launched HMS Warrior, an iron-hulled warship with its broadside guns in a heavily armoured compartment known as a citadel. As guns range and destructive power increased, the balance between guns and armour seesawed. For a while, armour proved superior to gunfire despite explosive shot. In 1862, the Confederate ironclad CSS Virginia destroyed two wooden steam frigates, USS Cumberland and USS Congress. The next day, she was engaged by the USS Monitor, which had a revolving turret. Neither ironclad could do the other much harm, but the inferiority of wooden ships was clear. At the Battle of Lissa in 1866, a line of Italian ironclads got broadside on to advancing Austrian ironclads. This should have been to their advantage, but the battle did not turn out as the Italians hoped. The Austrians sailed towards the Italians in three divisions. Each one was in a V formation with the more vulnerable vessels behind the more powerful ones. Both sides had ironclads of the French Gloire type. The Italian admiral bungled things so badly that he was actually changing flagship as the Austrians closed. Not only did this allow gaps to develop in his line, but two-thirds of his line were left without orders and held fire. Re d'Italia, his former flagship, was actually rammed and sunk. Another of his ironclads, Palestro, was sunk by rifle guns firing explosive shells. The battle influenced warship design. The Italian Affondatore was a new type of ram with revolving turrets, but it was so slow the Austrians easily avoided it. Despite this, for the next 50 years, larger ships, such as battleships and cruisers, were built with ram bows. The Navy needed ocean-going vessels. Having used a floating battery vessel in the Crimean War, they experimented with gun turrets. A masted vessel with turrets was tried out, but HMS Captain ended in disaster. Gun turrets needed an unobstructed arc of fire. As steam engines improved, the Royal Navy advanced to its first mastless battleship with revolving turrets. Not having masts allowed HMS Devastation a less restricted field of fire for her gun turrets. She never fired her guns in anger, but became an icon which even appeared on matchboxes. Thank you.